This morning I'm joined by Andrew Turnbull, a bioagronomist um, who's working for a company called TurfSolve and uh, this is a company that uh, might be uh, very popular with a large amount of the industry because we do know that uh, the preventions and cures for leather jackets and chafer grubs are getting taken away as fast as they've been found. But uh, TurfSolve have come up with something that for the time being anyway will be hopefully uh, a solution to that problem that uh, gives many, many people so many headaches, chafer grubs and leather jackets. Can you tell us a little bit more about it, Andrew, please? Yeah, sure. Th thanks, Scott, for the opportunity here. And um, TurfSolve is a, basically a blend of very sophisticated uh, surfactant technology blended with uh, vegetable oil. And what this does, when it comes against uh, chafer grubs, leather jacket larvae, the, the combination mixed with water enables the water to block every single orifice that the grubs breathe through and the pest then dies through asphyxiation. So, and this is classed as a physical control, which takes it, the, the big thing is, it takes it outside of the plant protection product regulations, because physical controls are not covered by that legislation, and the uh, HSC has no ju jurisdiction over, over such, such, such products. Mm. It is something that um, has been a headache, as I mentioned at the beginning, for some time because they've been taking them. There was, there's a, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was two ways. You can either kill off things like leather jackets and chafer grubs, or you shoo them away. You get them away from where you want them to be. That was it. That was the approach in the past. Is it? Is that a, a fairly basic summation? It, it is. Yes. Yes. Because the, the the residual effects are the the, the, the grubs don't don't like the uh, the environment, so it's not a hundred percent killer but uh, it, they, they don't like the environment they're in. So they go deeper or they come to the surface where they're dealt with by birds or, or just die through drying out. Mm -hmm. But uh, essentially, it's, it's, it's a product that produces this reaction. But it, it's, it's not a biological control. It's not classed as a chemical control. It is purely a physical control as a physical action on, on the grubs. Now, you were telling me just before we started to record the, the interview that this is a, an American company and they, they came by this use for what they were producing almost accidentally. Was that correct? That's correct. Yes, yes. The, the, the owner, J, J, Captain Jeff Steele from Florida, big, uh, big American guy, quite a character. But he, he was working with the University of Florida in, in trying to control a virus which is wiping out the, the orange orchards. In, in Florida, and they, they put this formulation on and found because of the surfactant technology, it just took the liquid right into the tree and cleared all the block xylem and phloem and, and the fruit started to heal, the trees started to heal, nutrients were able to get back into the tree. And so, so that, that was a great result. But then, then they noticed the grass in the orchards was growing really, really well to the extent the owners were complaining that, that they're having to cut two or three times a week just to keep control of the grass. So, so they then turned their mind to, to, to the turf industry and started uh, playing around with things and then came up with this formulation that worked fantastically well, both, both as, as a pest control but also as a nutrient enhancer. And they were able be, to, to uh, apply far less nutrients to to the turf to get similar results and that was simply because the the, the chemistry of of the the surfactants was able to take those nutrients right into the plant without any wastage into the soil and that's that's the key to it because the, the the molecular size of these surfactants is is round about six angstroms now that sounds a technical thing but an angstrom is a measurement where they, which they use to measure atoms and molecules and there are roughly um, uh, well uh, uh, there is an ang one angstrom is 0.1 nanometer so this is extremely extremely small and this molecular size is six and strong. So it's able to very easily get into the plant and in through the soil and into any pest that, 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 it, that it comes across. So that's the key to it, is the chemistry and the technology behind it. 
Now, they've come to you over in the UK here, Andrew, to um, to help move things along this side of the Atlantic. Uh, what stage are, are you at here? Um, and have you any um, customers on the ground yet, or is it still too early days yeah. for that? Well, we've, we've appointed two distributors. The first one is First Call Corporation, owned by Helen Ware. And they were supplying uh, a, a limited number of customers earlier this year, just as a test. So it works. We've had a really good response from that. And that then has expanded to a second distributor called Green Infrastructure Limited, owned by David Goodjohn. Now, David is going to be concentrating on sports turf, you know, football, rugby, bowling greens, things like that. And First Call Corporation are concentrating on the golf course market. So there's, there's two outlets there. Mm -hmm. And um, talking earlier about the fact that um, the, the agencies out there, European agencies, trying to ban products or banning products for all the right reasons, um, yeah, yeah. it's made a huge headache for, for tough managers um, over the last, what, 15, 20 years, would you say? Uh, yeah. What damage or what problems, just to articulate it a little bit, what, what problems has that caused? Well, it, it just meant that we've seen over the last two or three years, particularly with the change in climate, there's been a, a, a definite change in pattern of pest activity. You know, back in the day, in the, in the 90s and 2000s, when, when I was a, a golf course manager, you could rely on leather jackets being the end of the summer and, and in the spring when the, the soils warmed up a bit. Chafer grubs were in more or less in, in the summer, June, July time. But now we're seeing pest activity all through the winter. And some golf courses, as you know, a lot of people know, are just being wrecked. I mean, large areas are just being turned over, not so much by the grubs, but by the crows and birds turning the soil turf over. To the extent where there's, there's a number of clubs who were, were just, even before the COVID hit us, were considering having to close could because of the damage. So when there's nothing that to, in the hands of the greenkeeper, then it's a very precarious situation for the industry potentially and, and, and for jobs. So, so I think when something like this comes along, you've got to have a look at it uh, and, and, and at least try it because there's no alternatives. I was going to ask that. Is what, what, what else is there out there that uh, can mitigate any issues that uh, these pests can bring to a golf course and other sports well, businesses? Yeah, well, I think before, I mean, for the last, last number of years, about 12, 14 years, I've been involved in plant biostimulants and biological controls, compost teas, and, and I've lo I love every minute of it. Uh, and it's a fantastic way of managing turf where you're increasing the natural uh, uh, um, controls, increasing the health of the plant to resist a certain amount of, of pest damage. And a, you can do a huge amount of good and provide fantastic playing surfaces using those types of treatments. But when it comes to this level, I, I, said, I, mean, I have a phrase, uh, a mantra that says, you know what, sometimes you just need to kill something. You need to get control. Otherwise, you just once you've lost control, it's very difficult to get it back. You know, sometimes when it comes to disease management, sometimes times of the year when the environmental conditions are such that disease just comes down and it just wipes out the whole country. You know, suddenly, instead of little patches and little pockets of the country, suddenly everybody's got fusarium or everybody's got this. And in those circumstances, those who are using things like biostimulants and compost teas, they see a, a very quicker recovery afterwards. But it doesn't stop it. They'll, they'll probably have a slower ingress of the disease. But even in those situations, they'll still get it. And like I said, sometimes you just need to get control. And by, you can only do that just by killing someone. And this is the type of thing, this is the product that suddenly I switched on. Look, this is it. This is what, what, what can help us do you know just help turf managers get get control back i wouldn't want to see you up again it was up to the court of pesticide rights <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But i think you're right though i think it's, uh, it's all very well thinking that we want to keep chemicals out of the out of the planet out of the out of but uh, there are there's uh, mentioned mitigations there are compromises that are going to happen mm -hmm. to enable the whole world to keep revolving i think yeah yeah yeah, and you, 
Yeah, I'm going to say it is a difficult one because because you, you you want to do the right thing. Most golf course managers and, and grounds and they, they want to do the right thing, and they want to look after the, their environment and the piece of land that, that 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 they're responsible for. But they also have jobs as businesses that involve that, that have some serious investment, which has to be protected. And when when the tools of the job are being taken away all the time, then it is very difficult to keep motivated sometimes. Mm-hmm. So so hopefully it's something you know we with, with the turf solve, then this is an answer. It's not a total answer, mm-hmm. but it is a, a really good answer for, for this problem. Yeah. Well, good luck. I mean, I'm well aware of the damage that can be caused by these little blighters, and uh, anything that can help aid the work of turf managers in all sports throughout not just the UK but further beyond as well is to be welcome so good luck with everything Andrew and uh, thanks very much for giving me a little bit of your time this morning to explain um, Turf Solve thank you it's been a big pleasure thank you thank you